Hello friends, welcome to Pulse Field Expert channel. Excel has recently introduced a new feature in the uh, beta channel. Uh, that is uh, the new checkbox function, which is extremely handy and can be used quite creatively with various other things. Today we'll try to see what best we can get out of it. Here we have Excel 365 open. Under the inset tab, we can see the new cell control checkbox menu item. Let me select a few cells and insert the new checkbox control. You can see the default value of the checkbox is false. If we click on the checkbox and check it, then the value turns to true. This is the basic element. Now, we can use it in so many different ways that I can spend hours on it explaining. But we will concentrate only on some possibilities. To get this function now in December 2023, one must join the Microsoft Office 365 Insider program and select the preview channel as your current channel. Then, after performing an update, you are ready for this feature. In addition to this, you will also get the Python in Excel feature. I will soon make a video to explain this superbly powerful feature. Let us now get back to our checkboxes. If we use the if function in Excel to determine the state of a checkbox, like this, we can easily get to do something if a checkbox is checked or not. Here we are showing yes when the checkbox is checked and showing no if the checkbox is unchecked. I have got a list here. The list contains a set of names in the first column. The second column contains checkbox controls. And in the third column, we want a timestamp when the checkbox against a name is ticked. The timestamp function in Excel is now. If we write in the formula bar equal a now function, then the timestamp now is returned. Excel automatically fills up the whole column, but we will undo that. We need to further modify the now function so that it is triggered when the checkbox is ticked. Let us get rid of the now function from the formula and write equal if parenthesis b2 equal true, comma, now function, comma, and double quotation for returning nothing when the checkbox is not checked, followed by parentheses. This function returns nothing. This is expected as we have defined the formula in such a manner that it will return nothing when the checkbox is unchecked. We will expand the formula to the whole column by clicking on the small square at the bottom right corner of the cell. Now, if we click on the checkbox to check it, we get a timestamp. Let us click another checkbox. We get a timestamp. But both the timestamps now show the same time. If I click another checkbox, all three timestamps get the last click time. Let us uncheck all. Then start checking each checkbox one after another. The same problem of the last timestamp being everywhere. If we go to the Formula tab and click the Calculate Now button, we again get all the previously checked timestamps updated. What is happening here? Well, Excel calculates the Now function every time any calculation is triggered. To prevent this, we need to refer to the current cell's content in the formula. In other words, we need to use circular references in Excel. By default, Excel keeps this provision disabled because the circular reference, if used wrongly, may end up crashing Excel. We will open the Option menu and then the Formula tab. Here, we must have the Enable Iterative Calculation enabled, and we will keep the maximum iterations to 1. Then click OK to save this option and return to Excel. Now we are ready to calculate timestamps effectively. Here in this timestamp function, we need to add another logical operation to the now function. We will only call the now function if the C2 cell, that is the same cell where this formula is written, is empty. Therefore, our modified function to cascade another if with the logical operator as C2 equal to empty, then trigger the now function, else if it already has a value, keep that. 
Let's finish the function and expand the function to the whole column by clicking on the small square icon at the right bottom. Now if I click on the checkbox, I get to see the timestamp. If I check other checkboxes, I see different timestamps, exactly what we need. And if I click on the Calculate Now button, we see no change in any timestamp. Perfect. We got this timestamping right. In the next example, we want to create a graph with switchable elements. These switchable elements are going to be controlled via the new checkbox control. Here in this graph, we can quickly switch off any of the data points. To create this, we need the data first. I have added month by month sales and profit data. We have the month and year column, followed by the sales amount, and then the last column is the profit column. Next, I will add three checkbox controls and label them as sales, profit, and expenditure. Therefore, my sales checkbox is A2, profit checkbox is A3, and expenditure checkbox is A4. Here in the data section, I will add another column named sales, which will reflect the same sales column, but we will make that conditional with the sales checkbox A3. If the checkbox is checked, then only we should have data, otherwise we should get the NA value. We will use the if function to achieve this. We got it right. Next, we will use the same method to create the profit and expenditure column. Expenditure is sales minus profit. I am not explaining my steps here, as they are simple. However, in case you wish to understand these basics of Excel, you may check out my older video on the IF function. I will provide a link in the description and also in the I button. I will also format the new columns as currency, then select the whole data part and insert a combo chart. Format the chart correctly and place it aesthetically. Now within the chart design ribbon, let's click the Select Data button and uncheck the original sales and profit columns because we have made the same columns in a switchable fashion. Click OK and complete this. Next, click the chart type. Change the expenditure chart type to a clustered column and uncheck the secondary axis. Notice we have the profit in the secondary axis. Click OK. Change the chart title to Sales Profit Chart. Now we have the switchable graph that we wanted to build. Next, we want to filter a data table using the filter function and the checkbox as the filter inputs. Like here, we can select the country name checkbox and the data for that country is filtered. I can select multiple countries too. We have the data table here. I will quickly perform my steps for the filter and will not explain my steps. I already have a video on filters. If you want to understand the filter function, you may check that out. I have given the link in the description section and also on the I button. The basic concept is, I am writing the filter function using the checkboxes as the logical operators for the same. As always, I will provide the used Excel file in the description. Please download and check that out. Thank you for watching the video. We hope to see you in the next video soon. Thank you again.